Hello, everybody, and welcome back for another week here in Neptune City. Uh, my name is Jeremy, and uh, very excited to present this episode to you. This is something that I've wanted to do for a pretty long time in this game. I've never really had the context in any of my projects to do such a thing. Um, you know, my last big project, my last you know series was Vogelstad, and I always wanted to do a soccer stadium but we never really kind of like got to that part of the city yet until like, it never really made sense with anywhere that i was building in that um but here um i think i've got the right spot for it i think this is gonna make perfect sense uh you'll see kind of as the episode progresses uh why that is but basically what we're doing you can tell already from what's going on on screen is uh we're building a baseball stadium and specifically, we're building an old uh, kind of like classic ballpark. And this is something that I've just like, I, I'm so deeply fascinated by. I'm not a huge baseball guy, to be perfectly honest. Like, I'm not a big sports guy. I like it fine. I've, you know, I've tried to get into baseball at various times in my life, but it just never really stuck. Um, but I love ballparks, and that's kind of an interesting uh, quirk about me, I suppose. Um, I've always been really interested in like the older ones, especially in kind of the way that they fit into cities. Because, like for example, you know Fenway Park in Boston is so interesting because it fits within a certain set of blocks, and they had to build the stadium kind of around the shape that they had. Whereas, like in in most sports, you know, there's a kind of a regulation shape that everything has to be baseball for some reason allows you to kind of like fudge it a little bit like you know for example Fenway famously is like long on one side of the outfield and short on the other and to make up for that they um that they have like a huge wall <laughs> on the short side so if you want to hit a home run on that side of the of the park you've got to hit it really super high and for whatever reason that's completely kosher that's completely fine in the rules of baseball and like um, the old Yankee Stadium here in New York um, famously was built for um, Babe Ruth to hit home runs at. It was shaped exactly how I guess he liked to hit home runs. Anyway, I've always been really interested in baseball fields and like the histories of them and kind of the way that they formed based on the shape of the city. And so this one is kind of, um, it's centered around this idea. And um, kind of the concept for this field is um it's uh built out of old um old mills right so i guess in like the uh the early days the early settlements of the city these old mills would have been built and um i'll kind of justify them uh in a little bit i know you're probably thinking like old mills but we're kind of inland right now you'll see um but basically these old mills would have been left behind and um I think that the idea was that the 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 team was initially composed of people who worked at the mill and um, eventually the mill itself became parts of the stadium and um, speaking of the the team and the history and what have you um, I kind of wanted to throw this to you guys to the audience um, what are we calling this team um, that's something I want to figure out because I want to make some I want to make some custom branding for it and kind of like cover up some of these stupid vanilla um, uh, city arena signs with with some specific branding. So leave some stuff in the comments. Um, what do you think would be a good name for a team here in Neptune City? And um, some of the ones that I like, I'll probably throw in a poll or something like that, and uh, we'll we'll kind of decide based on that. Um, so here I'm kind of like working on these entrances. I struggle with this for a little while trying to figure out like how to, I'm basically just trying to cover up everything about the vanilla, um, stadium as much as I can, um, to, because it just looks really cartoony and stupid, but I want to keep the field intact because I want the animation of the players um, <laughs> and I want you know because like you can use the cube to like get games to quote unquote happen but uh, I want specifically to get the animations of the players playing and uh, this whole time building it throughout the entire time lapse I never quite um, manage it it always keeps canceling the games and I never uh, figure out why and pretty much right at the last last second I'm like you know what 
screw it. We just gotta, we gotta record the cinematics because, I mean, it just doesn't seem like it's ever gonna work. And um, I recorded the first cinematic and then suddenly out of nowhere, guys came out on the field and started playing. I don't know what changed. I don't know what was the difference maker. Uh, I couldn't possibly begin to tell you. But what I do know is that by the end of the episode and by the time I record cinematics, thankfully, um, we have uh, we have men on the field playing baseball. Um, so I'm just kind of like covering this whole area in these old bricks. Uh, if you've been a follower of my channel for a little while, you will recognize this texture. I used it all the time in Vogelstad. Um, it's just like a really nice old uh, herringbone brick pattern that um, it's like one of the rare textures that like no matter how you stretch it and screw with it, it kind of looks right anyway, just because it's already a little bit wavy and wiggly. And so the more you do that, you know, the more you distort it in those directions, it just looks like it's been kind of like waterlogged and become kind of like wavy in the ground, uh, if that makes any sense. Uh, so over here, I'm kind of like... Uh, working on the uh, surrounding area and um, I think at this stage like we're more or less done with the stadium I don't know that there's a whole lot more that I do to it I think there's like a couple of little details here and there with like billboards and fencing and stuff like that but for the most part we're done at this point and I'm building the surrounding neighborhood and so over here I you know I don't do a lot of tree coverage throughout the city for the most part um, which is an issue but um I did it here because I figured this is probably a pretty popular spot for like people from the suburbs probably come in for games. Um, and so they want this neighborhood to look pretty good for them. Um, this is a little detail that um, I really, really enjoyed. This is from, I took this from Fenway Park uh, at Fenway in Chicago, or not Fenway, I'm um, sorry, at Wrigley Field uh, in Chicago. Uh, all of the surrounding buildings because it's like a really it's another classic ball stadium that's like in a city block and all the surrounding buildings have like these bleachers on top of them so you can like go and sit on like somebody's roof and watch the game from pretty far out but um, I think it's pretty I think it's a pretty funny little quirk to add here um, and it adds a little bit more like culture and history to the city that I really appreciate um and yeah, these cool little animated uh, billboards. I ended up downloading a lot of new billboards for this just because like I couldn't, I tried to do once with like the, the road billboards, just kind of making it, um, uh, just kind of like getting rid of most of it in PO, but it just didn't really make sense in the end. Um, and yeah, at this stage, I mean, we're mostly done uh, with the stadium, just kind of like, you know, finishing off the uh, the home run fence. I didn't really talk about this, but I extended out the foul lines and put up foul poles, which is something that the uh, vanilla model misses. Uh, the foul pole is uh, arguably one of the most important aspects of a baseball stadium, and it's completely missing from the vanilla model. Um, somehow I missed this. Uh, I just left the entryway uh, all the way into the stadium like that. Uh, and now just kind of covering up these windows to like kind of integrate that entryway a little bit more. And this is, I don't really, I, I don't really use the uh, um, night mode very often. I don't love it usually, uh, but I really wanted to put some really nice stadium lighting here because like stadiums are one of the few things that looks really cool lit up at night. Um, and these just look fantastic. I think these are by King Leno. Uh, and here I'm trying to add uh, a little bit more story to the field. So I figured, um, you saw me put down earlier, there's that big Gordon's Gin billboard at the top of the scoreboard. And I figured that would probably have been like, it's a pretty old looking ad. So I thought maybe that's like the original sponsor of this stadium is Gordon's Gin. And, um, you know, they've probably long since gone out of business, but, uh, you know, they still named the, the field Gordon's Field and they probably kept up that sign just for historic value because it just looks so cool. Um, and so here I'm just kind of like closing off this back area. I figure this is probably where like the buses come in with the teams um, back here and they kind of pull into that little garage to go into the dressing rooms and uh, yeah, putting some barbed wire up so that like, you know, ne'er-do-wells can't get in and, and, and mess with things. Uh, so now we're, we're just about coming to the end of the half. Uh, when we come back, uh, we will be kind of working on the surrounding neighborhood and um, ex work, you know, extending the story of this place a little more. All 
All right, and we are back um, working a bit on the um, the road network around here. Uh, and so here you see me adding a little inlet from the river. Um, this is not something I'm going to be working extensively on in this episode, but it's something that I wanted to get in here as soon as possible. Essentially, what's going to be happening here in this surrounding neighborhood eventually, not in this episode, but uh, it's going to be a pretty industrialized area and there's going to be a lot of older factories over here that kind of formed around that river inlet. And it's going to kind of snake its way into the city a little bit more in like, you know, canals that get dug out further and further in. And the idea is that at some point that water source kind of made it all the way over here and that's what this mill was centered around. So, yeah, just trying to like do some fairly generic building around here. Nothing super distinct in terms of like building choice or anything like that. Just like some medium density or, or medium height, I should say, high density neighborhood. Um, and kind of, you'll start to see me work on this a little bit shortly, but the, the story of this neighborhood around here is basically that like this, it initially popped up around the mill and around like the factories in this area, right? And that's why this neighborhood started to kind of like uh, build up. And um, eventually when the baseball field came here, you know, in the old days when it first opened, this wouldn't have been a problem, right? Because everybody was still getting around on foot, on bicycle, on, you know, streetcar, et cetera, et cetera. But as the years progressed and as those, you know, those methods of transportation became less prevalent, um, eventually the car took over, right? And so this highway was turned, like the, as they planned the highway, they, you know, brought it along the, the riverfront to make use of the old train tracks that we talked about uh, a couple episodes ago. And then they turned it through this neighborhood to um, get cars to and from this stadium. And so what happens when you bring a lot of cars into a neighborhood, they need somewhere to park. So what you're going to start seeing uh, in this neighborhood is um, places where there used to be buildings where now there are parking lots. And uh, essentially it's going to be, we're, we're kind of trying to portray like the slow strangulation of a neighborhood uh, via parking. Um, as buildings become abandoned, as buildings go up for sale, like the most valuable thing you can do with the land because of the stadium's presence here uh, is to use it for parking. Um, and I guess I kind of jumped the gun a little bit on that because what we're working on now is a simple little, um, I guess we'd call it sort of like an offset diamond interchange because it is it is a diamond shape with like the on-ramps and off-ramps, but basically they're going to be kind of the two sides of the diamond are going to be offset from each other. So like where the off ramp is on this side of the highway that I'm working on now is where the, um, is where the off ramp is going to be on the other side. And then the, the on ramps are going to be kind of on opposite ends of the interchange, but I only get the, um, I only get the off ramps done in this episode. Um, but I figured we'd probably want some like pretty hefty, um, some hefty infrastructure here to like support all the cars that would be coming to games from the from the suburbs. Um, I picture these guys kind of having like a similar whatever the team ends up being called. Again, leave your team ideas in the comments. But um, uh, I imagine these th this team having kind of like a similar cultural significance to the Cardinals in St. Louis, where you know even though like a lot of people don't really live in St. Louis proper anymore, like the the suburban people have like a really strong cultural tie to this team and um yeah so there's like a lot of people traveling in from outside the city to go to games and um you know probably i'd say probably constantly lobbying to move the stadium out of here because they don't really appreciate the beautiful classic ball field they have and they want something more modern uh out in the suburbs you know somewhere uh and maybe maybe somewhere along the line in the series i'll well, maybe that's a fun project actually i'll do like a construction site where they're building the new stadium that would be an interesting that would be an interesting thing i think i'm gonna i'm gonna hang on to that idea um i think that'd be very fun but so here you see me kind of working on one of these parking lots this is the more um intuitive one here because it's right next to the stadium and it's like where the interchange is and i imagine it probably would have been 
part of the same construction projects that initially brought the highway here to begin with. Um, and here you see me kind of like struggling with these fences a little bit. Uh, they have kind of like a weird split in them. So if you want to do something tight like this, you have to kind of, um, uh, you have to separate them from each other and use single segments, at, at, you know, to separate from each other. Um, but yeah, I imagine this parking lot probably was part of the initial deal that brought the interchange here. And then you'll see kind of around the neighborhood, I'll start adding some ones that are more like, seem more unofficial and kind of uh, shaped a little strangely because they have to fit into the lots that, um, you know, buildings once occupied. But this, I imagine, is probably either owned by the city or owned by the stadium. Um, probably the city, more likely, because it's part of the it's part of the interchange project, um, and the asphalt color is the same as the other, so it would have been built at the exact same time. Yeah, I'm going to say this is owned by the city. This is public parking, but it's metered. You have to pay. Um, and unfortunately, uh, by the end of the episode, even though I've I've managed to get games started, I don't really get a lot of parking here. Nobody really uh, takes these spaces, but some of the other parking lots do get pretty full. Um, and yeah, having kind of a lot of the same struggles that I've had with this highway in the past, trying to like get these exactly right. Um, I think from here on, uh, outside of this neighborhood, it's going to start to be at just like surface level because it's just too much labor to, uh, keep this thing sunken everywhere. <laughs> um, and frankly, like, I just don't want to do these like barriers anymore. It's very annoying to work with these. Uh, I think it's time to like move on from sunken highway and like get something else going here i haven't really talked about this by the way this like interesting little overlap area uh i don't think i can i i don't know of an instance of this in real life uh where like you just have kind of part of the grid just continues over the highway like this but i think it looks super cool so i just kind of did it and that's kind of it's a big part of the philosophy of my channel, I suppose, is like a lot of the time, I don't know why I'm doing something. I'm just doing it because I think it looks neat. And, uh, you know, I try to keep things plausible and like semi, I don't want to say realistic because it's never super realistic, but like I try to keep things a little plausible. And um, this is one of those things that's like plausible, but maybe not the most realistic. I've never seen this before, um, but it looks pretty neat. So I did it. And over here, I didn't really know what to do with this little patch. So I just put some weeds and little trees and just called it a day. And yeah, so this, um, yeah, over here. Okay, so here we go. We're working on some of these unofficial little parking lots. Man, I introduced this idea way too early. <laughs> We're at, what are we at? Minute 18, and it finally has shown up. So yeah, you can see here, it's the space clearly where there used to be buildings. And as these buildings have come up for sale, they've been bought by these kind of like private investors. Probably people who own the buildings in the neighborhood um, have eventually been like, well, it's it's worth more to us to, to have this as parking spaces. You make more money than you do on like monthly rent. And this is where I realized that I have absolutely no fences in my collection that aren't uh, terrain conforming, very annoying. Um, also haven't learned my lesson on these fences in terms of the split that they do. Uh, but yeah, trying to fence in these areas to make them look like they're a little more private. And, you know, kind of giving these guys a little bit of backyard that's kind of like right, right, right up against this parking lot. And you'll see some more specific instances of this later where there's like places where there are distinct holdouts. There's places where distinctly somebody said like, no, I'm not selling my building. I'm not getting rid of it. Uh, I'm going to keep living here. Uh, this ends up being the most popular parking lot in the neighborhood for whatever reason. It like almost instantly is packed full of cars. Yeah, see? Uh, and so this is kind of along that I made like a little avenue, um, you know, that kind of like runs in front of the stadium. And I start to work here on a bit of like a retail corridor. And I think it's going to kind of, it's going to be one of the longer retail corridors in the city by the end of the series. Uh, but basically, yeah, putting some stuff over here that I think would be pretty popular among people going to games. Um, so like a Buffalo Wild Wings, Shake Shack, that sort of stuff. The kind of places where you'd like 
you kind of get to the game a little early to go eat because you're like, oh yeah, I like I like going to Shake Shack, and it's like the only Shake Shack in Neptune City, so like, you know, it's a fun excuse. Um, by the way, love absolutely love how it looks to clip that Dunkin' Donuts into a regular sized building. Um, just started doing that recently, and I think it looks it looks really great. Um, that's actually, I mean, that's kind of like what they look like in real life. They love to put a little bit of extra building onto buildings like that. Uh, if that makes sense. <laughs> I don't think it does. That sounded really stupid coming out. Uh, so here you see me kind of like, I just set these up kind of temporarily uh, to, to just get people uh, back onto the highway from here so we don't get super bad uh, traffic around here. And then just doing a little bit of uh, intersection marking tool here. Uh, this looks super European the way that this is set up, I feel, but uh, I don't really mind. Um, doing another one of these little parking lots um, kind of across from this one and then the, there's going to be one more really super big one and that's unfortunately right at the end of the episode but it's the one where I'm really distinctly showing kind of like what the what the political situation is with these um, with these parking lots in terms of like uh, you know how people are um, people who live in the neighborhood how they're interacting with them I suppose um but yeah, here you see they're kind of just like putting spaces just wherever they fit. Um, not really uh, in any sort of a, um, a specific pattern. Uh, this one is like even less official. It's just kind of like a bit of concrete. It's not even um, it's not even like a, a parking lot road. It's just kind of like a little little area. It's just kind of busted up with some fencing around it. Um, trying to add a couple more like old factory looking things, a couple old mill pieces here and there around here. Uh, this is what I was talking about, by the way. This is uh, kind of a big parking lot uh, with two buildings that just kind of sit right on the corner. <laughs> and um, they just kind of hold on to their little property, uh, maybe waiting for a better price, maybe waiting for, you know, waiting for a relative to die. Who knows? Uh, it could be any of a number of stories. Uh, but that music means, of course, uh, it is the end of the episode. So thank you once again for watching, for, uh, for, for being a fan of my channel. My name's Jeremy. You can check me out on Twitter, at Jeremy Thunder. And you can check out my podcast. It's called Generation Loss. Uh, and you can find that uh, in the description of this episode and wherever you find podcasts. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you so much. Uh, and I will see you next week.